All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the spring 2024 quarter of Bio 241, aka Human Anatomy and Physiology 1. Uh, my name is George McGuire, and I will be your instructor for this quarter. So basically, the entire course is going to be addressed through our Canvas sites. So all the resources that you need are going to be available on that Canvas site, including um, slide decks utilized in lecture, the recorded lecture videos, such as this one, um, any of your preparatory materials like the syllabus and course schedule, you can download both of those on the Canvas sites. Um, all of our assignments will be submitted and reviewed through Canvas and obviously graded on Canvas. So Canvas is our home base for this quarter. Hopefully you're already familiar with it. If not, um, you will definitely learn all about navigating through it uh, through this course, essentially. Um, so for this quarter's version of 241, uh, we are listed as hybrid, uh, essentially virtual hybrid, since our lecture portion of the course is going to be completely asynchronous. We will not have any live or face-to-face -face meetings for the lecture content. All of the um, lecture content that I will be addressing and sharing with you will be done so through recorded videos like this one, which will be recorded on Zoom, uh, posted onto YouTube, and then shared on the Canvas site. For the lab content, we will be meeting in person um, every Monday and Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. to 12.50 p.m. That's two hours and 20 minutes twice a week in our lab room, which is SAM 306. Um, that two hours and 20 minutes per meeting should be plenty of extra time, so I am going to utilize some of that time every week um, to discuss some of the larger concepts from the lecture content, since I think uh, a lot of the time it's very helpful to get to see a process um, or a structure being drawn out on the whiteboard and talking about each individual thing at a time um, with the entire class, and that way we can address questions from lecture content and it doesn't feel so disconnected. Um, other than those lab meetings, uh, you could also meet with me uh, every Thursday at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Those are my open office hours. That is essentially guaranteeing that on Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. for that two-hour time frame, um, my time is dedicated to you. So anyone who shows up to my office, which is uh, SAM 414, the fourth floor of the SAM building, or that joins the office hour Zoom link, uh, my time is completely dedicated to you. So I'll stop whatever I'm doing and we can talk about whatever you need help with. Beyond that, if you ever need to reach me, you can use my email, which is just my first and last name with a period in between it, george.mcguire at seattlecolleges.edu, or just reach out to me through your Canvas inbox, which tends to be the simplest and easiest way to do that. So a bit of a background about me, why I'm here. Um, I was born and raised in Florida, moved out to Seattle, Washington in 2021 to escape the political and social climate uh, that is kind of taking over in Florida and moved somewhere that's a lot more accepting, open-minded, um, and liberal, I suppose. Um, so while in Florida, uh, I stayed there all the way through my uh, college education. So uh, I went to Florida State University for both my undergraduate and graduate degrees. As an undergrad, I studied both psychology and biology, um, came into college with no interest in biology, or at least only a minor interest in bio as it pertains to psychology, but then had some really great biology professors early on that completely changed my perspective and opened my mind to how exciting um, biology is and inspiring me about science in general. And so that became my main focus. Um, so kind of mixed the two and was doing a lot of neuroscience type co courses. Um, as an undergraduate, I got to do some neuroscience research. I was helping a graduate student with their project, looking at the effects of our microbiome, which are the bacteria that live on and in your body, um, and how they may be affecting our psychology, our personality, our social behaviors, which is a relatively new area of science for a long time we've understood that our microbiome plays a big role in how we digest our food and the maintenance of our gastrointestinal system. Um, but only recently, within the last 10 to 15 years or so, um, have we started to develop an understanding of how those bacteria are affecting larger parts of our body, such as your brain, your personality. And so in our study, we looked at one specific species of bacteria, introduced that to a rodent model, and found that that bacterial species 
um, seemed to enhance social behavior, um, which is really, really cool. It was really exciting to get to take part in a study that, that had some significant findings at the end um, and part of a, a, a new area in science, a new understanding. So that was a lot of fun. If you want to learn more about that, please re feel free to reach out to me about it, or you can look up um, my undergraduate thesis if you feel like reading through something like that. Um, for my graduate degree, I got a master's in STEM teaching, uh, which was a relatively new uh, degree program at FSU um, and had a lot of flexibility to it. So most of my coursework was focused on how to teach biology to uh, college students. Um, so got to very much align it with what my goals were after graduate school. Um, as well, my courses were mainly focused on research-based pedagogy and philosophy related to science teaching. So we've learned a lot um, in the past 20 years about what is effective for actually teaching science, or at least for, uh, I don't like the word grooming, molding um, uh, good scientists. Right? We're moving away from the historical version of teaching science, which was long lists of terms and facts and a whole lot of memorization and moving more towards active learning as, as a part of science, getting to practice the skills um, and recognize the conceptual knowledge, the patterns that connect things, which is all leads into actually doing science well, rather than just memorizing a bunch of facts. Um, and so that's how I like to teach. And in 241, we do have a, a good bit of that factual and terminology portion of science, just because of what the content is, right? You have a lot of bones and muscles and structures of our various tissues to learn the names of and how they work together. But I will be doing as much as I can to focus on the physiology part, the function part, right? Um, emphasizing the relationship between structure and function. It's a big part of how living things work um, is boiled down to the idea that structure dictates function. So if you can get a good understanding of how something is structured, you can generally make some pretty good uh, guesses, ideas, hypotheses about how that structure ends up functioning in the living thing. The last piece of information here, um, as a part of my master's program, I wrote a um, practitioner piece, which is essentially a high level lesson plan that got published um, in the research journal, which focused on the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, um, and used their spike proteins as a model for teaching about genetics, mutation, and evolution, um, which as I mentioned in lab earlier this week, um, I hope there will be some time where I will get to, to pull up that modeling system and show this model, because um, you can input different mutations and see how that changes the amino acid profile of protein and how that might affect its shape and its chemical composition and thus um, give a better understanding of how a virus that was originally infecting animals um, may have had the ability to jump to humans or did have the ability to jump to infecting humans. So if you'd like to learn more about that, feel free to reach out as well. So outside of academia, um, I'm uh, a big fan of the outdoors. Growing up in Florida, my stepdad was a Boy Scout uh, leader. I was a Cub Scout. My dad was an Eagle Scout growing up and loved to be outdoors too. So I've always spent a lot of time outdoors. Um, I love that Washington has such a wide variety of diversity in its geography and uh, life, its biology, the living organisms out here. You, know, you can go to the desert and the mountains and the, the ocean and the rainforest all in one day, if you can drive that much in one day. Okay. So I'm uh, really excited about that stuff here. Um, I also spend a lot of my time playing video games. I've got Baldur's Gate 3 shown up here um, because that's probably the game I put the most hours in recently. Um, but I've also been playing a lot of Stardew Valley uh, with their new 1.6 update. Um, I don't play that game casually. I'm very much an efficiency-minded person, so that game is not a casual game for me. Um, but I do enjoy it a lot. That's another one. Slay the Spire is another game I've been playing a lot. So yeah, I love video games, um, and I give a lot of credit to video games for developing my scientific skills, my scientific inquiry, the way I look at the world, creative problem solving, becoming comfortable with failure. Those are all big skills that are important for science that I feel like I learned and continuously practice through video games. And then lastly, you get to see my crazy dog um, that we brought out here from Florida with us. Okay, so that's me. 
Uh, now let's get back into course content stuff. So this whole PowerPoint essentially highlights from the syllabus. This isn't everything that is outlined in the syllabus. So it's still very important that you read through that yourself because the syllabus is a contract and you should never sign a contract without reading it. So please make sure you read all of your syllabi. So briefly mentioned about office hours. Um, an important addition here um, to note on is that I can only discuss grades with you if I can verify that I am talking to you directly. So that means I need to be able to see your face to know that I'm talking to you. So I will only discuss specifics about your grade if we are talking in person or if we can do it on Zoom with your camera on. Right? Your information is protected. Your parents can't reach out to me and ask for your grades or ask about how you're doing. Right? I can only share that stuff directly with you. These are the course objectives for the course. So this essentially describes um, the knowledge and skills that we are hoping to achieve uh, by the end of this course. So by earning a passing grade, um, this is telling the next person, whatever this was a prereq for, or whatever this was a requirement for um, a particular job, this is telling that person uh, what you learned uh, through passing the course, right? And so we are hoping to achieve all of these objectives by the end of this quarter. The materials for this course. Um, you will absolutely need this textbook. Um, if you're enrolled in 241, I'm assuming you're going to be moving on to 242 and then on to some sort of health sciences path. And you will need this textbook for both a and 1 and a and 2 So you use it for this course and you'll use it for the next quarter when you're taking 242. So you will absolutely need the Fundamentals of Anatomy and Physiology by Martini and Nath. Um, any addition should be fine. Really, with new editions of textbooks, they just change the figures with some updated images. They'll maybe change some of the examples and questions, but a majority of the factual text is the exact same. Um, so you should be just fine with a earlier edition. Um, should be a lot cheaper than the newest edition. Not required, but it's highly recommended as there are a good number of points in the course that can come from these coloring book pages, um, is the Anatomy and Physiology Coloring Book by Caput and Elson. A lot of students really enjoy this coloring book. It's a great way to passively spend time with the content because you can color while you're doing other things, right? But it does take a good amount of time for some to fill, uh, completely fill in some of these pages. Um, so I do recommend getting it. It's relatively cheap. Um, and again, you can get older editions if you need to or use one as long as a bunch of the pages aren't filled out. And um, those there will be various assignments where you will turn in coloring book pages for, for points. So along with that coloring book, you'll need some coloring pencils to fill that in. We'll also use these in lab occasionally. Uh, we do Play-Doh models in lab. Uh, I have lots of Play-Doh in the lab to share with you, but if you would like your own to verify that no one is messing with it um, and you're not touching someone else's sick germs um, on their Play-Doh that they put back there the, the lab before, um, you can get your own. But again, you don't need it. And then lastly, you will need regular access to a laptop or computer and reliable internet. A phone and tablet for Canvas is not going to be sufficient for completing this course. Um, the app version of Canvas misses things or isn't able to represent certain images or download certain files. Um, so it's not going to do everything properly. So you need a laptop or a tabletop computer um, to be able to complete this course sufficiently. And again, reliable internet. Um, I My least favorite emails from students are the ones at 12.01 a.m. Like, hey, my internet went out for the past hour at my apartment and I wasn't able to turn in that assignment. That's not a reasonable excuse. Um, you have weeks, if not at least the week before, to complete any assignments that are due. So waiting till last minute and not having internet is not going to be accepted as an excuse for late work. Okay. So you need the textbook. You'll need it for this course and the next one. Highly recommend this coloring book. Depending on who your instructor is for 242, you may still be using this coloring book. You'll need coloring pencils to go along with that and probably for lab. Get Play-Doh if you want your own, and then you will need your own laptop or computer with reliable internet access. Okay. So the organization of this course uh, is splitting the content into three separate units. At the end of each unit, there will be a unit exam for the lecture content and a unit exam for the lab content. Um, they will be separate exams, and then your score will be combined from the lecture and lab practical into one um, unit one exam score. So these units are about four modules each, covering four to five chapters each. 
Um, so unit one is basically a review of bio 160 stuff. We'll talk about basic biochemistry and then all of the cellular biology that you should have learned in previous quarters. And then we'll get started with the new content talking about all the various tissue types that we'll then show, see show up um, in our various systems. For unit one lab, we're mainly focused on the skeleton, on bones. Um, there are two, on average 206 bones in the human body. You'll be introduced to all of them. We'll spend uh, more time focusing on some specifics. Um, and you'll not just learn the bones, you'll learn about the bony markings, which indicate um, things like attachments for tendons and um, how they articulate with the various bones around them. And maybe there's space for things like nerves and blood vessels. Right? Um, so those are the bony markings of the skeleton. In module two, we'll move on to some specific systems and tissues. So our skin, which is the integumentary system, our bones, which is the osseous system. So not learning specific bones like we did with lab in unit one, but learning about how bones work in lecture here. Articulations with our joints and then our muscle tissue, mainly focused on skeletal muscle, but we will touch on smooth and cardiac muscle as well. And then for our lab topics, we will be learning the different muscles. Okay. Um, so there are over 650 muscles on average in the human body. You won't be introduced to all of them um, during this course, but you'll be introduced to a good number of them. And again, we'll focus on some specific ones, their attachments, where they originate, where they insert, um, what movements they're responsible for, et cetera. And so joints go along with that, um, talking mainly about movements or how those joints can function and flow based on the muscles attached to them. And then our third unit is all about the nervous system. Both lab and lecture are going to overlap really heavily with this content, um, all focused on the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, and autonomic nervous system. So how our body essentially senses and controls everything that's going on. So like I said, there will be a uh, assessment, an exam at the end of each unit, one for lecture and one for lab. The only exception is that our unit three exams are combined. So you'll just take one exam on unit three. There will be a small practical lab portion and mainly uh, lecture questions. So your final grade in this course um, can be based off of two optional systems. Um, the point system is quite is very likely new to you um, and unique to other courses that you've taken. Uh, so your final grade is based on how many points you've accumulated out of 1,000. So if you have accumulated at least 1,000 points, you have earned a 4.0 for the quarter. However, there are over 1,300 points available from all the assignments um, in this class. So you do not need to do every single thing, right? You get to have some flexibility and choice about what assignments you want to focus on and spend your time on. So a lot of the assignment types will regularly repeat, like the coloring book pages, games and puzzles, quizzes. Uh, there's lots of case studies, which the general format will be the same. And so early on, I recommend that you try to complete anything and everything. And then as you get familiar with the different assignment types, um, start prioritizing completing ones that seem to benefit your learning and then leave the ones that seem less effective or less helpful uh, to either not do them or only do them if you have the time to dedicate to it, right? So you get some of that flexibility. You get to start choosing um, which assignment types are best for you. The only caveat to this, again, there's over 300 points more than you need for a 4.0, so lots of flexibility. But the only caveat to this is that you must maintain um, an exam average of above 50 and you must score at least 40% or higher on each individual exam to qualify for this points system. If you fall below that 40% mark on an individual exam or a 50% average um, by the second exam, you will get one opportunity for redemption. And if you don't do well on that redemption or you're unable to bring that exam average back up, um, you essentially automatically fail this course. The highest grade you can possibly get is a 1.9. Um, these exams, these assessments, although obviously it's hard to get out of that mindset of this is a uh, uh, high stress, high pressure situation where you're being assessed on what you've learned and need to do everything you can to get these points. And obviously it affects your final grade. But I want you to try to look at these assessments, these exams, as much as you can as an opportunity to show what you've learned. Because that is the whole point, right? We have learning objectives. Um, dictating or showing what we need 
to learn um, in that section, in that chapter. And then the exam is supposed to be an opportunity for you to show the evidence that you have learned. Show me what you've learned and how and what that means to you. And so my question types or the questions that I utilize uh, try to give that opportunity as much as possible. Okay. And so a redemption um, would be, you know, in the case that the questions I asked um, were specifics about things that you didn't spend time studying, but you did learn content. And so you get another opportunity to show what you did learn, even if you missed the questions on the exam. That's the idea. And you can see the point breakdown here um, for that grading scale. Again, a thousand points is all you need for a 4.0. Your other option is to utilize your exam average as your final grade. So say you can't dedicate a whole lot of time to this class this quarter, um, and or you feel really confident about your studying and your ability to, to perform on assessments, then you can you know, give less pressure and emphasis on completing class assignments and instead you know, rely on your exam average for your final grade. And so that exam average would follow the, the college-wide grading scale um, you don't need to make a decision about what grading scheme you want to use right away. You know, you can feel things out through the quarter and then decide later. Um, but keep in mind, you have two options for how you are graded. Okay. So all the points in this course come from these main assignment types. So there will always be at least one quiz per chapter that we cover. The quizzes vary in points, but average around 18 points each for a total of around 330 points just from quizzes. We will have um, at least one lab assignment per week, which are worth up to 20 points. These are typically going to be discussion-based assignments. Um, so for this skeleton portion of unit one, um, you guys will be making Play-Doh models of specific bones. You'll uh, record yourself uh, walking through the different markings of those bones and how that bone works or what it articulates with. Is this a left or a right bone, et cetera? You'll post that video on a discussion board. And then after the due date, you will be randomly assigned two peer reviews to go complete. So each peer review is worth five points, so 10. And then your original video is worth 10 points. So 20 for each for a total of around 260. Each of our exams, your average score for each unit exam is worth 100 points, so 300 total. Um, there is this reflections and other assignment group, which uh, will have just assignments that don't fit into these other types. Um, those are typically around 10 points each for a rough, rough estimate of, I mean, likely higher than 100 now. Um, my in-class assignments have been turned into uh, other assignments, these case study things for you guys to complete. So this is likely actually higher. Games and puzzles. There will be multiple games and puzzles with each games and puzzles assignment. So each individual game or individual puzzles were two points. So like your module two games and puzzles assignment may be worth 10 points total because there's five games and puzzles that you can complete. You don't need to do all of them. Same thing goes for coloring book pages. Those are worth three each. So if there's six coloring book pages or six games and puzzles on that one assignment and you only submit two, you can still get the four points for the games and puzzles or the six points for the coloring book pages you completed. You don't need to do every single one to submit for that individual assignment. And so altogether, these points add up to around 1,300, okay? um, a little over, uh, honestly, probably closer to 1,400 at this point. I need to recalculate that stuff. Um, so here's a look at our current tentative schedules. Right? We don't meet for any live face-to-face -face lectures, so this should be unchanged. Right? This is just giving you an idea of the pacing of what you should be keeping up with and covering um, and when the assignments will be due, basically, at the Sunday following each of these weeks. So. Um, this upcoming Sunday, any of the introductory assignments and chapter two assignments are going to be due um, on Sunday the 7th, et cetera. And then lab is going to be important to, to keep up with and pay attention to, so you know what you're coming into lab talking about. The more you can familiarize yourself with the content before you come, the easier of a time you'll have in lab, right? If you're familiar with the structures of the vertebrae, you'll have an easier time making your vertebrae models. Uh, and so I highly recommend you download your own copies of these that are available on Canvas, print them out, put them somewhere you'll look often, or take a screenshot and keep them on your phone so you can refer to them often. Another important thing here is our exam schedule. All of our exams will be conducted in person in our lab room. So our unit one lecture exam is on Monday the 22nd, and then our practical skeleton exam will be on Wednesday the 24th, so on and so forth. 
The only really flexible thing on here is the final exam, just because I need to confirm with the other instructors that utilize 306 that I have the uh, lab room available to me at that time, but I will send out a message when that is confirmed. Something else of note, um, the one holiday that affects our schedule this quarter is Memorial Day, so there will be no class on Monday, May 27. Okay. Best practices for success. This is a very rigorous course, um, likely the most rigorous course you have run into at this point in your college career, um, with the only exception being if you already have a degree from somewhere else or you've studied at a larger university and taken intense courses. Um, but if your whole college career has been in the Seattle College's system, um, I'm extremely confident that this is going to be the most rigorous course and that it will require the most time um, uh, outside of class to keep up with it. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of content. Um, and so it's going to take a lot of dedication um, and time management to really learn this stuff. And if you're in this course, I'm assuming you're going into some health sciences path. And so the content here is very relevant to you. And so your goal isn't just to cram the information to pass the assessments or, or complete the assignments. Your goal is to learn, right? So that you will be a good nurse or a good doctor or whatever you're going to do after this. You will need this content. So do what you can to set yourself up for success. And success meaning you are learning and gaining an understanding, not just earning the grade in the course. So uh, best practices are before class, I guess um, we don't have lecture class, so this isn't extremely relevant to a live meeting, but before watching the recordings, I guess, you should review that week's learning objectives or that chapter's learning objectives. Those, again, show you what you are hoping to learn and the skills you're hoping to gain um, through that chapter. And then the assessment, the exam is designed to assess whether we have achieved those goals, right? To provide you the opportunity to show that you have achieved those objectives. So review those, excuse me, use those as a guide when you're note-taking. Thoroughly read the textbook chapter. Um, I would say skim the chapter before watching the lecture and then take notes while watching the lecture and then go back and fully read the textbook chapter and adding on to your notes based on the learning objectives. And then for lab, please briefly re review that week's assignments um, before you come to lab so you have an idea of what we're doing. Um, while you are taking notes or watching those recorded lectures or in lab, um, there is a lot of research that shows the benefits of taking notes by hand, so either with a pen or pencil or with a stylus, right? involving more of your body, uh, more of your senses is going to build stronger neural connections and thus build a stronger memory. And there is a lot of evidence supporting that idea is that physically taking notes is much, much better for your learning than typing. Um, that doesn't mean that's the only way to learn. I was a typer in college and obviously did quite well. And I'm, I'm here using this info and I know this info well enough. Um, but the research shows that physically taking your notes is much better for learning. I just wasn't aware of that at the time. Um, this was more relevant for like if we had live meetings um, telling you to focus your note taking on concepts, practices, tips, extra things that are said during the lecture because you have the PowerPoints available to you. You don't need to spend time rushing to write down a piece of information that's on that screen and thus ignoring what I'm saying. Um, but since you're watching recorded lectures, you can basically do both. Um, please ask questions when you have them. I will only know that you have a question if you ask it. I will only know that you are confused or lost if you tell me. Right? Um, and it's my job to help you learn. And so please give me the opportunity to do that by asking your questions and then offer your input, share your experiences. Um, I am just one person with my own unique background and experience trying to talk about this stuff in a way that will connect with as many people in the room as possible. But we also have this great advantage of that we are a classroom full of 24 students with their own unique experiences and backgrounds who are all going to look at this information slightly differently or make connections to their life in slightly different ways. And so the more that you guys share, the more likely it is that someone in the room can connect with the content. So please do share, please talk to each other, please work together. Okay? You guys are each other's best resource here. So outside of class or after class, um, in order to fully gain an understanding of the content and to keep up with the amount of material that we need to cover this quarter, 
it is recommended that you budget at least 15 to 20 hours per week outside of watching lectures, outside of attending lab to this content. Again, it's very rigorous. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of work to fully understand this stuff and to keep up with all of it because there's a lot. So if that seems unreasonable to you and this is not a great time in your life where you can dedicate that amount of time each week to just this one class, maybe consider trying again in a future quarter. I'm telling you, you, you need that time. Okay. Uh, review and add on to your notes frequently. It is much better for your learning that you spend uh, 30 minutes to an hour uh, five days a week rather than cramming a whole bunch at the end of the week. Right? Review your notes frequently. Um, prioritize the assignment types that benefit your learning, right? As you learn which assignments do best for you, you can start pushing off the ones that don't really seem to help you out and just use those as points. Find a study group and then spend time um, with repetition for that lab stuff. Okay. Additional tips. Um, at this point in your college career, I assume you guys have your SCC email all set up and good to go, your CTC link account. If not, please get that set up as soon as possible. Um, there's a document on Canvas walking you through or taking you to the website um, telling you how to set up your SEC email and CTC link account. Um, if you haven't ever gone into your Canvas account settings, check those out. See what your notifications are set up to do and how you're being notified. Do you prefer text? Um, do you want to be notified about when assignment due dates change or if I make an edit to an assignment or if I leave a comment on your assignments, on your submissions? And then lastly, check Canvas regularly. I basically solely communicate with you guys outside of class through Canvas. I will send messages to the entire course or to you individually through your Canvas inbox. So please make sure notifications for Canvas messages are on and check your Canvas regularly for any updates. And so beyond that, please take a look at the uh, Seattle Central College Student Services website to see what the college can offer to you all. Um, there's free tutoring on the first floor of SAM. Um, we don't have any specific 241 tutors at the moment, but we are getting more and more content and materials to that tutoring um, to be utilized for 241, so that is building. Uh, if you need help, uh, check out the student counseling services. There's not a whole lot that they can offer, but they may be able to offer something that helps you. And then lastly, um, if you have ever struggled with test anxiety or you have a known disability or you feel like you would benefit from increased time on your exams or a private area to take your exams, please go talk to the Accessibility Resource Center and see if they may be able to do something for you. Right? Not all disabilities are, are visible and obvious right? um, and everyone deserves a little bit of help if they need it. So at the very least, go have a conversation and see if they may be able to offer something helpful. And that is all for this PowerPoint. Um, so I am going to quickly walk you through our Canvas site, um, and that should be the end of this introductory video. So on Canvas, the first thing you're going to see, let me switch to student view, is always going to be our homepage. Um, so right now, this is just our first week general info stuff of when we meet and when our exam dates are. Um, but weekly, this is going to be changed and updated to a overview of what that week looks like. So talking about what content is being addressed on which days, what assignments are due that week, um, and maybe a sneak peek into the next week. Um, so you can find links to most of your relevant stuff for that week just right on the homepage. However, most of your course navigation is going to be through modules. Everything you should need is here in modules. So this very first module will be here the entire quarter, with our syllabus, course schedule, um, where and when we meet, uh, the Zoom link uh, for office hours, et cetera, that will live there the entire quarter. The rest of these modules are going to move depending on what unit we're in. So at the end of unit one, modules one through four will move to the bottom of our Canvas site. And then modules, uh, there's the exam one module, and then modules five through nine or five through eight, I forget, will move up, right? So the relevant content will always be at the top. So module one is just our introductory stuff. Um, please read through all this. Um, check out the extra tutoring info, how to set up your email if you need that help, um, and then do these quick introductory assignments. This introductions video assignment will give you uh, an introduction not only to your classmates, but also to how the peer review system works. Um, so you'll upload a video introducing yourself. You'll share a YouTube or TikTok um, 
that you find enjoyable or is relevant to you. Um, and then at the end of the week, after the due date, so Sunday at 11.59 p.m., you will be randomly assigned to other students to go complete a peer review for, right? And that's how the lab assignments are typically gonna function. So this first introductions video assignment gives you an introduction to that. Right? So this should all be relatively quick in this module one stuff. And then module two is also due this week. Um, so we do need to get straight into the content with chapter two. So um, you have the PowerPoint that I'm gonna be using in my recorded lecture, those learning outcomes or learning objectives are linked up here. The recorded lectures will show up just under this PowerPoint. Um, and then any additional resources that I want to share for that week related to lecture content will be below that. You have your lecture assignments. Every week we should have at least one quiz, a coloring book pages, and games and puzzles. And at the bottom of the module is the lab content for that week. So this week we're going to be addressing both the anatomical positions and orientations as well as our first lab assignment due for module three, which is the vertebrae, right? Um, but that's generally how these modules will look. You'll always have your lecture resources at the top, lecture assignments just under that, and then all of your lab resources and assignments at the very bottom. And that pattern will just continue. Um, all of the exam modules should already be published, so you have access to the study guides if you wanna get started on those things early and extra study materials are in there for you. And that should basically be it, other than your inbox. Right? Again, I will be reaching out to you guys, communicating through the inbox. You can reach out to me through the inbox, so check that out frequently. And then you have your grades um, for whenever you want to check that out. So that should be all for this introductory overview video. Um, I'm really looking forward to this quarter uh, working with you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.